Hey guys, what is going on? It's Carl here back with another episode and we have got to it. The revisited review of the essential phone. So in case you've been living under a little tech rock, this has been the most anticipated Android smartphone for this entire year. It is essentially the bare essentials. So this was the phone that was designed by Andy Rubin, the co-founder of Android, and he wanted to create a phone with no branding, no frills, just the basic necessities inside a premium build. And I can tell you the best feature of this phone is the design. It is outstanding and it is beautiful. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is the gorgeous display. 5.71 inches quad HD and it is essentially edge to edge on almost all sides. It wraps around the top of the device with a small little cutout for the front facing camera. And I'm sure we'll see this design more as the new iPhone 8 comes out and it is just awesome to look at. I love displays, or I love phones, I should say, with displays that take up the entire front. They're just so aesthetically pleasing, so beautiful to look at, and the essential phone nails a home run on that end. It's got a small chin on the bottom, and when you flip it around, you might think it's a sheet of glass, but it's in fact made out of ceramic, which means it's technically more scratch resistant than any piece of glass, Gorilla Glass out there. I haven't noticed a scratch on mine over the past month. Keys, coins have not made any sort of impact. And maybe the one thing that I'll say, it is a huge fingerprint magnet. So if you're OCD like myself, maybe grab a skin for it. It makes it look better. Or you'll be constantly buffing out the back like I am for that like new look. Having OCD for these kinds of things definitely sucks. Around the sides of the device, it's made out of titanium, so it has such a premium feel in the hand, it's almost like a solid brick. It feels heavier, it feels more dense, and it just feels expensive to hold. And I would go as far as saying this is the most premium feeling smartphone that i felt, that I've used, and that's an option in its own, just to buy this guy. Just for the design, it's that good. So with this beautiful design comes a few minor drawbacks. The first, which I think is a glaring omission, has to be the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, RIP, Harambe. And the fact that this phone has no IP rating, so rest in peace if you throw this guy in water, if you bring it into a snowstorm, pool, hot tub, you name it. Keep this guy away from water, that is essential. Otherwise, we've got another RIP case here and you don't want that because it's an expensive phone, which is maybe the third reason, which kind of ticks me off. It's starting at $700. And this is for a phone that is in its first stage. Number one, PH1, phone one. I see what you did there with the name. And don't get me wrong, for its first attempt, I think they've definitely hit a home run. They've got the best, latest and greatest internal specs. Every single thing that you throw at the essential phone, whether it's 3D gaming, multitasking, it zips through without any problems. Couple that with a stock Android feel, and it's almost perfect on the Android operating front side as we have zero bloatware, zero skins over top. It is stock Android to the key and should get updates pretty quickly, just maybe not as quickly as the Pixel lineup. And maybe that's another reason to hold out as we've got the Pixel 2 coming out pretty soon. Going back to that price point though, $700, I feel on the Android side, we have so many competitors this year, whether it's the LG G6, upcoming Pixel 2, and at 700 bucks, uh, I just don't think this can make a dent into the market. If this came in at 500, I think we'd really be getting somewhere. And for something that maybe not too many people have heard about, because when you walk around with this guy, a lot of people ask, what phone is that? Because they've obviously never seen, never heard of it before, especially if you're not in the tech space, which maybe most of you guys are, but the majority of people outside are not. So I've talked about the performance being clutch. It's a flagship phone and performs perfectly. Getting to the camera side, we have an eight megapixel front facing cam and on the back, a 13 megapixel shooter, which takes great photos, I won't lie to you, but they are not the best in class. And for something that has been so hyped up, so well looked at, it's just a pity that something like the Galaxy S8, the Note 8 has a better camera. And just being straight up frank, if you're looking for a phone for the camera, you probably shouldn't be looking here. 
Maybe one little addition that does bump it up is interesting little mods that pop on the back, like this 360 degree camera. I've used it a ton, and just like most mods on smartphones, I think they're a great little gimmick at first. You use them a lot, but in the end, you don't carry this thing with you everywhere. You might lose it because it's just an attachment. The 360 vids have been pretty dope, pretty cool, but once again, I can't share them with everyone yet. They are dope to look at, but... Maybe just a cool little gimmick to show your friends, and that's about it for now. And I will round off the review by saying I still don't think you'll be disappointed if you grab the Essential phone. It has been awesome to use, the build quality is second to none, and the thing that I love most, absolutely zero branding. Whether you're looking at the device, whether you're looking at the high quality accessories that it comes with, braided cable, solid charging brick that, once again, completely blank, and I love that. Companies, take note, this is how you make accessories, this is how you make phones. Branding sucks. I get that you have to have it, but just not having it makes it so much better. If you can, be sure to check it out in store, feel how premium it feels in your hands, see how awesome it actually looks, and I do know that the Essential Phone might be exclusive to a few carriers. For example, here in Canada, it's only available on TELUS, so just make sure you keep that in the back of your mind and make sure you check it out as I am a huge fan of beautiful things and beautiful the essential phone is. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will catch the rest of you one of my next episodes or in one of my next vlogs. Peace!